from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Cardinal Collins. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from an anonymous donor from Innisfail, Alberta. This Mass is offered in loving memory of Melvin and Genevieve and all their deceased family members for the temporal and spiritual welfare of their family and for peace throughout the world. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of the televising of this Mass to the faithful of Canada and around the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. The word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, when your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the promise that Abraham would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For this reason, the promise depends on faith, in order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the adherents of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. He is the father of all of us, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. Abraham believed in the presence of the God who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, Abraham believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said, so numerous shall your descendants be. Therefore, his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Every year the parents of Jesus went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up as usual for the festival. When the festival was ended, uh, they started to return. The boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Assuming that he was in the group of travelers, they went a day's journey. And then they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they returned to Jerusalem to search for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, child, why have you treated us like this? Look, your father and I have been searching for you in great anxiety. He said to them, why were you searching for me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. And then he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. The Gospel of the Lord. 
The great St. John Henry Newman once said that if we seek to be perfect, we will find it not in doing extraordinary things in far off places, but by taking each moment of the day and living it to the full in the ordinary things, the things that are common and simple in our life. It's like the words of the great wonderful uh, Stations of the Cross by Clarence Ensler, where Jesus speaks to the one making the stations and says, seek me not in far off places for I am close at hand. Your office, kitchen, workbench, these are altars where you offer love and I am with you there. That's also the spirit of St. Therese of Lisieux, always finding the way to be holy, not in the spectacular, but in the little things. She said, you know, there are beautiful roses and marvelous flowers, but it's the little flowers that add beauty really to the landscape. And that is what we are all called to be. And so I think of that, especially on this feast of St. Joseph. We don't know very much about him. He doesn't say really anything, but he acts in a way that is simple and loving, basic, quiet, out of the spectacular, out of the spotlight, but giving the strength and the love which provided the foundation for the life of our Lord when he came into this world. He is the quiet saint, the saint who shows us how to grow in holiness by ordinary things and the ordinary struggles of life. He was indeed the one through whom the, the great uh, Davidic uh, promise would be uh, fulfilled, but he is a simple and holy man, not very uh, spectacular. And in that he gives us a model. We look to the gospel today and we see he's involved in something that is very common, very familiar with parents worried about their children. This is something that isn't some distant uh, great act of heroism, something far away. Like every mother and father, Mary and Joseph are worried about where is Jesus? Now they do not understand that he is teaching the doctors of the law in the temple, but then he points out to them that uh, he needs to be uh, about his, he must be in his father's house. And by that, of course, he didn't mean Joseph, he meant the heavenly father. But I think that's ultimately what both Mary and Joseph realized too, because both of them both show that sense of obedience, simple, humble obedience to the will of the heavenly father. Certainly Mary shows that when she says, behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to your word. But also Joseph shows that too. When uh, he is uh, worried about marrying Our Lady, and he's uh, concerned about different troubles and things, he receives a message from the Lord, and then he just goes and obeys it with simple humility. What more can you ask than that? That is the model of this quiet, almost anonymous saint who was one of the great saints of the church and to whom our country is dedicated. And I think each one of us as Christians, as disciples of the Lord Jesus, should look to Joseph for the model of how to live a life in Christ, a way that is effective, it is practical, it is rooted in the concerns and worries and troubles which we face, all of us, as we journey through this valley of tears. But it is in that place, that simple place, that we will find the way to the most glorious holiness. And that is what we're called to. We're not called to a superficial Christianity. We're called to that depth of obedience to the will of God, which we find in our Blessed Mother and which we find also in St. Joseph. We're called to greatness. Our faith is not an ideal that we simply honor with words or sort of put it on a mantelpiece and put a candle in front of it. Our faith, our life in Christ is something to be lived as Joseph and Mary lived their lives practically, actually in this world, living faithfully in total obedience to the will of the heavenly father. And you think of how they were doing that in a world racked by war and civil strife and all of those things, which they found 2000 years ago as the environment into which the Lord Jesus came, the second person of the Trinity. And that is the world today where we're called to live that life of simple holiness. 
a world of war and strife and violence, so many things. And yet the light shines in the midst of it, the light that is Christ. And we're called to reflect that light by living a life of holiness in every ordinary thing, not far away, in ordinary things, our kitchen, office, workbench. That's where we find the holiness. And in that we find our greatest example of obedience to the will of God, obviously, and our Blessed Mother. But we also very, very much find it in the great St. Joseph, that simple, humble man who gave his whole life to doing the will of our Heavenly Father. He's an example for each one of us to follow, that we might follow his pathway to holiness. And now let us join together in our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now we offer our prayers to Almighty God. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and for the church throughout the world, especially where it is facing persecution. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all of those who are sick and suffering and facing troubles in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We pray for all of the faithful departed. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our for all of those in our daily TV Mass Prayer Intentions book, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we ask in our community prayer that you might guide us to enter more deeply into the spirit of Lent and into the forgiveness, reconciliation, and renewal that it offers us. We pray to the Lord. Lord we offer these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the glory of his holy church. We pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served with loving care your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so we may be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. And on the solemnity of Saint Joseph, to give, give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten son, 
who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him, the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Francis our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Of thy kingdom come, of thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to one another a sign of the peace of Christ. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family you have nourished with food from this altar as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph and graciously keep safe your gifts among them through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And your Blessed be the name of the Lord, now and forever. Our help is the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass.